and let us all that we can to build a better future. Let's get started with our first segment of the day. So, uh, Chris Malls, rightfully so, is doing his victory lap. Uh, definitely going on a lot of major media networks, uh, explaining to what him and his dedicated team of followers and supporters had to do to get this major win in New York State. Now, again, as we said on Friday's show, we're 100% behind this, but as always, and we'll talk about this later on in the show as well, um, it's very important for a lot of these Amazon workers to be ready for any kind of counterattack, any kind of counter movement that Amazon will do, and we'll be discussing that in another segment of our show. But uh, nonetheless, all of them deserve victory and a, a right to celebrate. Uh, so here we are. We're going to have Chris and Smalls not only talking about what he had to go through, but even calling out the absent la- party of labor, the Democratic Party. Because let's face it, AOC and Bernie Sanders, when they were needed, they didn't show up. So let's play this first segment. Shout out again to Case Study QB. Let's play it. This week, we saw a huge step forward for the American labor movement. Workers at an Amazon warehouse on Staten Island voted to organize the first union in the company's history. This victory comes as workers across the country are forming labor unions and taking on corporate greed. A little over a year ago, not a single Starbucks location was represented by a labor union. Now, 11 different stores have voted them in. Thousands of workers fought for their rights and won at companies like Kellogg's and John Deere following massive labor strikes. But how did this get going for Amazon, a corporation with one of the strongest anti-union track records? It started with one man, Chris Smalls, a former Amazon employee, who took it upon himself to form the Amazon Labor Union. Smalls had been fired in 2020 for protesting the company's lack of safety measures during the pandemic. And while Jeff Bezos was in space having his Neil Armstrong moment, Chris was on the ground taking one small step for man and one giant leap for workers' rights. Let's Amazon right executives like David Zapolsky. So I think it's very important to note how corporate media ignored the dangers that was happening in a lot of these Amazon uh, wellness centers, these Amazon warehouses. Um, let's be clear. In 2020, the pandemic was at its height. Um, and unfortunately, because of this, Amazon's policy of having its workers there, a lot of those workers were exposed to COVID. And unfortunately, many did lose their lives. Uh, There were unsafe working standards that were happening there and all across the country. And Chris Smalls was one of many, but was the most vocal about the dangers that was happening to a lot of his fellow workers. You know, I say in this show that we need more people to step up and do the right thing. Chris Smalls is one of those people. And he was the one who yelled the loudest, who raised the alarms. And when those who had a large political following wanted to, I don't know, perhaps maybe use their weight, their support, they could have helped. They could have come on board. But they didn't show up. They were nowhere there. But Chris Smalls and his team and so many other volunteers stepped up to get this major win that we saw on Friday. April 1st of 2022. It's just not for them. It's for all those who couldn't be here as well. And remember, look, it's just not only COVID, but Amazon has a long, sad history of abusing workers. It's truck drivers wearing diapers, people working at ridiculous hours. And as we even covered on this show, even keeping its workers in its facility, all the while there's a giant tornado heading towards that same Amazon warehouse. Yeah, we covered that. We talked about it. And that's just only a handful of issues that's wrong with Amazon. So let's go ahead and play the rest of the video. Polsky tried to undermine Smalls' unionizing efforts by calling him not smart or articulate and saying in a leaked memo that the company should make... That's pretty racist for Amazon to say. I'm just... Look, look. Hey. I'm I'm just saying, Amazon, that was really freaking racist and bigoted to say. But then again, hey, Amazon, I thought you cared about your workers. Probably not. Let's play the rest of it. Make him the face of the entire union movement. Well, that worked out amazingly for Amazon, didn't it? That stand in solidarity with the workers here 
stand in solidarity with mer- workers in any community that has a, a Amazon facility because they affect your community. Amazon doesn't become Amazon without the people. And we make it, we make Amazon what it is. Joining me now is the man himself, the man who pulled off this union victory at Amazon, Chris Smalls. Chris, thanks so much for coming on the show. First off, congratulations on your successful organizing you. efforts. This is a huge deal. Amazon is the second largest employer in the nation. They spent millions to try and foil any plans to implement a union. What does this achievement mean, not just for Amazon workers in Staten Island, but American workers across the country? Um, well, this is this hopefully is a catalyst for you know a revolution for uh, the working class. You know, I'm I'm a worker even though I'm I'm still unemployed, and I was able to uh, you know lead lead us over here in New York, and um, you know my story, and uh, the the workers that organized this uh, campaign, all of our stories, um, it shows people that you know when people do come together, just ordinary people come together, we can achieve anything. You made sure, Chris, to thank Jeff Bezos for his help by saying that while he was in space, you were getting out signatures. Founding a union is not an easy task, let alone going up against a giant like Amazon. How did you manage to pull this victory off? Uh, once again, you know, I was I was hired in 2015, um, entry level. Um, you know, I worked hard, got promoted up to a process assistant. You know, I just think that this company didn't realize how much I was invested into them. You know, I opened up three buildings in the tri-state. I trained thousands of employees. I trained hundreds of their upper management. Um, I was a really good employee there. Let's pause Everybody here. respected me. You know, this is almost like Amazon created this. Their distaste for workers, their policy towards abusing people. They did this to themselves because, let's face it, at any point in time, Amazon, which is raking in huge profits, paying zero in taxes, they could have, in theory, in theory, provide their workers with plenty of benefits, health care, dental care, 401k, all that good stuff. They they could have. They have the money. They do have the money. There's no excuse saying that they couldn't, but they're so interested in providing their upper management with so many wonderful benefits. So let's face it, uh, there's nothing down uh, left for the regular working class people. And remember, pay attention to what he said. He started off entry level, helped open three warehouses, that's loyalty and dedication. For a time, I'm willing to bet Chris Smalls actually believed in what he was doing, liked what he was doing, working there, trying to make ends meet, like anyone else in this country. But what makes him different than those jagoff CEOs at Amazon is that when he saw his fellow workers suffering and hurting, he spoke up. He knew something was wrong, and that's what we need to see more of, people stepping up, doing the right thing speaking out against injustice, speaking out against brutal working policies. This pandemic, it shined a light on just how terrible it is to be working right now in this country with no social safety net, no benefits, where corporations will rake in huge profits. And we need to see more unions, more worker co-ops. We need to see this happen immediately. Chris Smalls did the right thing by speaking out. And remember what he said. You know, he started off entry level. He helped open up three warehouses. He was there. He always showed up on time. He wasn't a bad employee. But what does Amazon say about him when they fired him? He's not smart. He's not articulate. Well, I bet you're paying attention to the words that he's saying now, aren't you, Amazon? Let's play the rest of the video. Everybody loved me. Um, when I got terminated, obviously, what motivated me was the leak memo. And, and I, I just play for a different team now, you know, um, the people. And I always had. Um, they they, they uh, galvanized behind me. And, you know, the way we organized from within, knowing the ins and outs of the company, knowing the grievances, living these realities, um, knowing the concerns, listening to workers, building relationships. You know, it was just, it was just pure love and, and dedication to... Um, making sure that workers are connected to us as human beings. And um, that's how we were ultimately uh, able to take down a machine that Amazon is. You mentioned the leaked internal memo. When you see what David Zapolsky, the former, who was Amazon general counsel when this memo was leaked last year, when you see what he said about you in an internal memo, um, 
you must be taking special pleasure in this victory, right? Uh, definitely, uh, absolutely. You know, when I, when, <laughs> that, when that leak memo came out and, and knowing that uh, Jeff Bezos signed off on that, um, that obviously motivated me to continue to uh, advocate for workers' rights. I didn't want to become another statistic where, you know, I get fired from the company, I discredit it and smear it, and, and, and that's it. You know, that's the end of me. Awesome. Um, I told. I hope this motivates all of you too. Because, you know, a lo- before I fully invested my time and energy here in the Heartlands Media, I used to work at Costco. Now, my experience at Costco, great. I had a good time with management. You know, I didn't have any problems, but it did come a point to where I had to break away. But listen to Chris Small's story. Now, this is something I think we all can relate to. When he was fired from his job, he was smeared. He was told he couldn't do anything. He wasn't articulate. He wasn't smart. I want all of you to use what he, what he and his team achieved. Use that to fuel your fire so that you can go for your passion too. Don't give these bastards the satisfaction. He has every right not only to be angry, but to do a victory lap around those jagoffs that were saying those wrong, hateful, racist, bigoted things about him. Because let's face it, those statements were racist and bigoted. They are. It's a fact. There's, there's, there's no denying it. He did the right thing by stepping up. And he wanted to help other people along too. And that's what we need to see. This is what I'm talking about, especially for this midterm election cycle. I want to see more support from independent movements, independent candidates, supporting ballot initiatives, and helping out your community. This is what we need to do. We need to break away from the traditions of mid of this midterm election cycle where people vote team red or team blue. Because let's face it, nothing will fundamentally change if we vote Democrat or Republican. Because these politicians don't care about you. They don't think about you. It's up to us. We are the ones that we have been waiting for. And this victory in Amazon, over Amazon, by the ALU, is phenomenal. That means we also have to be on our toes because you know in America, these corporations are going to try and crush it. We can't let that happen. It's up to us to step up and to do the right thing and fight for a better future. Use this as fuel for yourself, for your own endeavors, for your own dreams. It can happen. Let's play the rest of the video. Well, them, you know, if they want to make me the face of the whole unionizing efforts, um, I'm going to prove them right, and um, I'm going to absolutely continue to fight. And that's exactly what I did ever since I uh, was terminated. I, I woke up every day with organizing on my mind, and I traveled the country. Uh, I brought uh, people together, and I was able to bring it back home to New York. And New York is now the first uh, be, be unionized. So lengthy negotiations remain. We can expect that Amazon will try to delay negotiations. Amazon employees in Alabama in Bessemer just had a revote to form a union after Amazon was accused of violating union election conditions last year. Amazon higher-ups have also directed personal attacks at you in the past, as we just discussed. What do you see as the next steps? And are you prepared for the fight ahead, the fight that goes on? Uh, well, we know. We know they're not going to want to come to the table. We expected that. And, um, you know, we're going to prepare ourselves on our end. We have, we have lawyers for expertise in that field. Um, we're going to meet with them. We're going to um, add some more to our team. We're going to expand with our, you know, our internal network and um, in- infrastructure. And we're going to prepare for that battle. You know, in the meantime, we got another election to win in, in a few weeks. So we're focusing on that. My team is here meeting up. Um, We're focused and dedicated to whatever challenges and um, battles that we may have against the company. Chris, Democrats like to say they are the party of the underdog, the party of labor, of workers. And yet the vast majority of elected Democrats in Congress, last time I checked, haven't said a word about your victory. How disappointed are you in the Democratic Party when it comes to the issue of labor rights? Let's pause it right here. All right. There is a fundamental problem with the Democratic Party. Democratic Party puts on this neoliberal mask, right? This neoliberal mask <laughs> of saying that they care about working class issues. They care, they care about labor rights. They care about Medicare for all. Notice there is this whole big tidal wave of feel-good tweets that you're seeing from AOC, Bernie Sanders, Ro Khanna, and the rest of them. But where was all this fire, this passion, this excitement last year? Remember, through executive order, Biden can legalize cannabis, pardon student debt, make Medicare for all happen. 
You can do this. Remember, the Congressional Progressive Caucus negotiated, especially Premier Jayapal, that's ridiculous build back better from $7 trillion to $1.75 trillion, and Manchin Cinema destroyed it. Manchin Cinema voted down for the $15 minimum wage increase. AOC, Bernie Sanders, and the rest of the progressive members in the United States House and Senate were nowhere to be seen for force a vote for Medicare for All, March for Medicare for All, or even the three-day general strike summit meeting. Nowhere to be seen. And it's, I gotta say, Democrats, what, what, what are you going to be running on for this midterm? What, orange man bad? Republicans bad? Look, we know that. Look, I don't want to see Trump I never wanted to see Trump elected in 2016. I don't. I didn't want to see him get reelected in 2020. And I sure as hell don't want to see him get running in 2024 or get elected in 2024. I don't want to see it. But let's face it, Democrats, since you are taking your marching orders from your corporate donors and willingly losing, like the Harlem Globe, like the Washington Generals against the Harlem Globetrotters, stuttered on that one there for a second. What are you inspiring, Democrats? What are you? inspiring. Nothing but loss and failure. Now, there are other channels that will yell at the Democrats harder, but at this point, there's no need to yell at the Democratic Party because we know that they suck. They're terrible at their jobs. You know, they could be out there with the people. What was preventing AOC from being out there with her fellow New Yorkers? She had the audacity to say that a lot of those people weren't her constituents, but Chris Smalls corrected the record on Twitter by saying some of your constituents who live in your district work at this Amazon warehouse. She could have showed up. I mean, she shows up at all other campaign events. She had time to go on vacation and do all these other wonderful things. She could have, in theory, showed up there. There was nothing preventing AOC, the new Democrat darling, from doing anything. Same thing for Bernie. Where were you at, Bernie? Let's play the rest of this video. Well, you know, right now, um, there's a lot of buzz on, online about, you know, who supported who didn't. And um, I want to clear the air on that. You know, um, you know, they, they didn't support us. And that's just uh, a fact. You know, I know who was here on the ground with me every day. I know who came out to support us at our rallies. And it wasn't them. And it's not just them. It's a, it's a lot more people that are out there that uh, obviously didn't show up for for these workers here in Staten Island. And it's a shame that, you know, they wait until, you know, we get to an election and we actually are victorious to come out and show their support, something that they could have done 11 months ago when this campaign first started. Um, so I'm just hoping that they can redeem themselves. You know, this, this is a marathon. Um, I don't have any ill will towards any of them. I just want them to do right by their constituents. We're here in New York. Doesn't matter what district you come from. Doesn't matter what district this building is in. These are all New Yorkers traveling from all boroughs. I know 8,300 of them. I know where they live. And I can tell you, they absolutely uh, represent um, these, you know, the politicians that they elected. So, you know, they all need to step up. And I'm talking to every last one of them. They all need to step up and make sure that they are taking care of these people. Chris Smalls, a pleasure to speak with you. Congratulations on your victory. And thank you for your time tonight. Absolutely. Thank you. Anytime. All right. So we're going to play another clip from Case Study QB. I'm going to give time phase to set that up. Now, that's the final minute segment interview, but I want to replay it again so you all hear the words of what he's talking about with the Democratic Party. And again, shout out to Case Study QB for getting that last one minute, 30 second video segment part of that interview, because we have to talk about the Democrats, you know, and I'm seeing a lot of uh, little comments here in the chats too. So before we play it, shout out to VS, uh, VSA Dams who says, but uh, we had to send weapons uh, to this ridiculous conflict in Ukraine, Kit. And then also, let's face it, the rich need tax breaks. That's what the Democratic Party is good for. The Democratic Party is good for sitting on its hands. You know, let's think about the 2020 election cycle for a minute where a lot of people were yelled at, browbeaten, bullied for not wanting to support Biden. Well, the fact that Biden and Harris haven't done anything to make the working class lives here in this country a lot better really says a lot. It really says a lot. And we have to do better. We have to be better. And we cannot rely on these politicians to help us out. So let's play the rest of this video from Case Study QB. Again, huge Chris shout out to him. 
Democrats like to say they are the party of the underdog, the party of labor, of workers. And yet the vast majority of elected Democrats in Congress, last time I checked, haven't said a word about your victory. How disappointed are you in the Democratic Party when it comes to the issue of labor rights? Well, you know, right now, um, there's a lot of buzz on, online about, you know, who supported who didn't. And um, I want to clear the air on that. You know, um, you know they, they didn't support us. And that's just uh, a fact. You know, I know who was here on the ground with me every day. I know who came out to support us at our rallies. And it wasn't them. And it's not just them. It's a, it's a lot more people that are out there that uh, obviously didn't show up for, for these workers here in Staten Island. And it's a shame. That, you know, they wait until, you know, we get to an election and we actually are victorious to come out and show their support. Something that they could have done 11 months ago when this campaign first started. Um, so I'm just hoping that they can redeem themselves. You know, this, this is a marathon. Um, I don't have any ill will towards any of them. I just want them to do right by their constituents. We're here in New York. Doesn't matter what district you come from. Doesn't matter what district this building is in. These are all New Yorkers traveling from all boroughs. I know 8,300 of them. I know where they live. And I can tell you they absolutely uh, represent um, these, you know, the politicians that they elected. So, you know, they all need to step up. And I'm talking to every last one of them. They all need to step up and make sure that they are taking care of these people. Right on. Now, final note for the story. AOC, where are you at? Bernie Sanders, where are you at? Even if you showed up there for one minute, I'm pretty sure that minute would have meant the world to all those activists and organizers. You know, the fact that any progressive Democrat says that they're with the working class citizens, where are you at when the fight is needed? You just don't show up the minute when everyone's celebrating. It's like saying, hey, oh, congratulations on building the house. You know, I was going to help out. Here's a couple of nails and a piece of wood and some uh, half bucket of paint, but I'm here anyways. No, that's so stupid. It's insulting. And I have no idea how the Democrats are going to try and run this election cycle. In fact, we're going to be talking about uh, how the Democrats are getting anxiety a little bit later on in the show because of Biden's failing numbers. At the end of the day, it's working class people. It's us. People doing this ourselves. We are the ones that are going to have to step up and do the right thing. We cannot rely on these politicians to ever, ever come to our aid. Because it's not in their interest. Because our politicians work for party leadership and their corporate donors. AOC and Bernie, they should have known better. And they should have showed up. But they didn't. And they probably never will unless it's an election season. But then again... Are they really being authentic? I don't think so. By the way, before we end this segment, one last thing. Let's actually have democracy in this chat. I know, foreign concept. Type one, if you think AOC or Bernie or any Democrats present there would have made things easier for the workers. Type two, if it would have made no difference whatsoever. Just want to get your honest thoughts. 